<laughs> Shadow Man. You wanted something? I just had the worst dream. Let me guess. Potato tore up your Monica body pillow. I... I how? You're having a therapy session with a psychic. I think that says enough. Touche. Wait, what's that? Check your fly. No, it's not that. For once. Say, have you seen Potato today? No. <gasps> no! <laughs> I'm sorry for your loss. Breaking sound effect. <laughs> what was that? This can still be fixed, right? Right? What? What could you have lost? My waifu, Shadow Man. My waifu! Insert. You lost a body pillow. I lost several potions and spells that can achieve almost anything. Teleportation, memory manipulation, mind control, spontaneous combustion. I've been working on dream manipulation. I'm serious, anything. You lost a pillow, a piece of cloth, with a printing of an anime thought. Hey, don't blame me, blame Potato. Wait, Shadow Man. Do you, by chance, have a rage potion? Yes. Shadow Man, have you been using my pet as a test subject? Maybe. I'm gonna kill you, you hear me? I'm gonna kill you, I'm gonna... I'm gonna kill you, I'm gonna be the man Why behind the slaughter. You're dead, you're dead, man, I swear. Typically, when lacking a weapon, combat is settled in good old-fashioned fisticuffs. Or if you're a coward, you try and talk it out. <laughs> For today's combatants, not even that was enough, as their weapons aren't just their hands, they're on and in their hands in the form of sharp blades. Sounds like they're compensating for something. Am I right, Ed's Lord? Uh, please excuse this moron. Zone forgot to lock the liquor cabinet. Mm -mm, Crimson! Hey, saw it off, you freak! Yeah. Now you people see what I have to deal with on a daily basis. <sighs> anyway. Reddy Krueger, the infamous citizen Springwood slasher turned dream demon. And Wolverine, the vicious leader of the X-Men. I'm self-insert. And I'm the Shadow Man. And today, we'll see who will win. Most vicious? Isn't the guy Canadian? Over the target up. There, now I'm leaving. So, see you all in my segment. Ah, oh, sweet Olympia. Redrick Charles Kruger is a character created by Wes Craven and is the main antagonist of the slasher film series A Nightmare on Elm Street. In 1968, he was burnt to death by the citizens of Springwood. After his death, he began killing the children of the city in their dreams. As long as his victims are dreaming, 
Freddy Krueger can inhabit and control their dreams, twisting them to his own ends. He's also capable of entering a victim's mind via state of intoxication, whether the victim is drunk or stoned. Any physical harm done to a person in this dream world would carry over into the real world, though exactly how differs significantly between films, allowing to easily commit multiple murders. Kruger often toys his victims by changing his form and surroundings, usually resembling the boiler room where he brought his child victims that had been missing in town. He also has the power to manipulate or possess any object or part of the dream environment not kept exclusively on the person of his victim at all times after initial creation, as he does in the fifth and sixth films. His powers increased from those originally granted to him based on how many he knew and feared his existence, and also how many souls were in his current possession. At the height of his powers, he could cause severe damage in the real world. This included possessions of humans, as shown in the second Nightmare film, briefly in the fifth, and Freddy vs. Jason, his corpse, as shown in the third, objects or animals, also shown in the second, or even literally pulling a victim from the waking world into the dream world, as shown in the fifth Nightmare film. If one of Freddy's victims wakes up while they're holding onto him in the dream world, he can be carried into the real world, where he's still superhumanly strong and durable, but can be wounded. This was used for extensive fight scenes in the first Nightmare film, Freddy's Dead and Freddy vs. Jason. In a person's own dream, Kruger could see into their minds and use their deepest fears and personality against them, which became his trademark in the films, at times taking the image of previous victims to help lure friends or relatives to their doom. By the way, doesn't he have a catchphrase? Anyway, few victims managed to use their own imagination to consciously manipulate their dreams against him, a technique known as lucid dreaming, but this typically had little effect on Kruger, who remained in control of their dreams. Other of Kruger's powers involved absorbing the souls of his victims into his own body after they had been killed, which served to make him more powerful. As he gained a victim, their face would appear on his chest, each soul augmenting his power. Each soul he takes grants him the attributes of the victim. This has led him to acquire skills such as martial arts, high durability, in addition he is a shapeshifter and can turn into anything such as a cockroach. He can also use his powers on others. In the Dream Master he kills Debbie by transforming her into a cockroach, then crushing her inside a roach motel. However, he does have some weaknesses and vulnerabilities. If he does not have enough power, he can't kill anyone in the dream world or the real world. If most people have forgotten him, then he is trapped in heck, and therefore can't harm anyone in the real world or the dream world, as seen in Freddy vs. Jason. Freddy is afraid of fire, as seen in Freddy vs. Jason, which is a total, I swear to... And uh, his one last weakness is, you know... The Wizard Master! And he has one last power which I forgot to mention, and that is... The Power Glove!
Oh, today we will be talking about the Badger Mancer. I mean, the, I mean the Badger. No, no, wrong one. Bob, great. Bob, the X Men do. Bob, Bob. Okay, Bob. Drop it, Bob. Bob. Thanks for the lift, Bob. The only place you're going is down, Bob. Bob, Bob. I feel the way I feel, Bob. I don't know who you are, Bob. 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 Watch it, Bob. Hey, it's a big island, Bob. How are you, you old war? Something I can do for you, Bob? Sorry, pal. Wait, wait, no, it's just Bob. We were talking about Sabertooth. Wrong one. Wolverine. There we go. Wolverine. 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 Badger Man. Wolverine. As we all can well, probably see, he has claws made out of bone slash adamantium. Since the Canadian government kind of used his bones to adamantium, giving him an indestructible skeleton. He also has a super healing factor, which does a lot more than healing. He has healed from things like an atomic bomb. So the acceleration of this healing factor is astonishing, if I'm being honest. From being able to heal from an atomic bomb, that means his skeleton would have to be healing enough for each kind of blast. As in, say your skull was disintegrated by the blast and everything else was still being disintegrated. Your spine would have to keep regrowing your skull, making it then pass the blast zone. It's weird shockwave logic. His healing factor also makes him age super, super slowly. Like we are talking nigh immortal. He looks in his 20s in 2020, but he is in his late 200s, I think. And point being, he fought in World War II, and I think World War I, and the Civil War. His berserker for one basically means he takes in all of his animal instincts and just goes ballistic. Even though he doesn't like to use it, since there's usually <clears throat> collateral. This collateral can definitely range, but still, it's kind of a last resort for him. And speaking of animal instincts, he does have a lot of them, including animal-like hearing and some smell, making him an excellent tracker. A bit of history. He was born around Civil War times, so like I said, late or mid 200s. I think I don't know. My math might be off. Or point being. No one can pin down this guy's age, believe me on it. And if you can somehow pin down his age, here's a no-life trophy. You may have it. But he does have two blaring weaknesses. Number one, he may have an accelerated healing factor, but he still kind of needs blood and oxygen. Suffocation but what is about a way of killing him. Dude? No, this will be incredibly difficult to do. Thanks to Charles Xavier, he's built up a bit of a mental shield. No psychic brainwaves can not can ever get into Wolverine's head. So let's get into it. Monster, are you? The Wolverine. Now then, now that all the research done, and I finally found the keys to the liquor cabinet again, let's get to the battle! Wolverine's net, well, kind of natural, 
defenses against psychic attacks, impenetrable adamantium skeleton, and psychic fear of magnets, which did really do a lot in the long run. But with the claws of literal indestructible alloy, and as well as a super ultra healing factor, and animal-like instincts, we have a winner between the animal man and the burn victim. Careful now, I bet the other horror movie characters stick to him very well. The winner is Wolverine! Now if you excuse me, I heard a magical badger man sing, and I really want to find out what that is. Switch strike to the midsection, middle of the chest, you ain't able to get a breath, and I'm destined to be the only one left, so you better call the rest in. And this is what you call a lesson, calling yourself a veteran, but are you really better than a cybernetic competitor? Better take your medicine, you headed in the wrong direction. Stepping into the battle, man, it's hard, but I'm not afraid, and you know I gotta go with sharpen my katana blade. Everybody here got my back, cause I'm about to attack, and I'm making it up for the family that shot my main enemies, and never watch them, give them my idea.